And the topic of today's lecture is determination of channel capacity by Morgas method. So we have seen how to find the channel capacity by some other methods, right? Using the mutual information as well as uh, using the Shannon's method, how to find out the channel capacity. Here we have another method of finding the uh, channel capacity for some diff uh, special case, for a special case. So here, the channel capacity by Morgas method. So in this lecture, initially I will talk about the theory of Morgas method, how to find out the channel capacity, the equation for the channel capacity, and then we will uh, consider one or two examples. And later on, I have two more uh, questions from the previous examinations. So that covers today's lectures. So first, let us consider a two input to output channel having a channel matrix i mean the channel setting is something like this you have two inputs maybe x1 x2 and two outputs y1 y2 so the source here emits uh, symbols through two points x1 x2 that comes to the channel and at the output of the channel we have two collection points y1 and y2 or output point one and output point two. In this context, uh, we can write or represent this channel as a channel matrix. That is nothing but the conditional probability of the output when we are we know the input's probability. How can we write? Something like this, right? That's the channel matrix representation. We know the probability of the input, then we will be determining what will be the probability of output y. So here y represents the output points or y represents a variable that holds the outputs here. In this case, we have two outputs. x represents a variable that holds the input values here. So the channel matrix, matrix is represented something like this. P11 that represents probability of data transmission at this point and collection of the data at this point. What's the probability? And P12, that is, this is the point number one at the input and this is the point number two at the output. Then what is the probability? Similarly, P21, P22, this we have seen. P21 represents here. At the point number two of the input, we send some information and we collect the information at output point number one. Similarly, P22 represents the probability of sending the data through the second input point and collecting the output at the second output point. So this is the uh, well-known uh, way of representing the channel matrix when we know the probability of the inputs. So now we will do something more than this. We try to find two parameters. They are named as Q1 and Q2. They, they are basically the solutions of the channel matrix. So yeah. when we know the channel and the probability of the inputs, then we can represent the channel matrix, P, Y, X. If you know this, if we can represent this, then can we find out Q1 and Q2? To find Q1 and Q2, what's the relation between Q1, Q2 and P, Y, X that is given here? So this is P, Y, X, that's the channel matrix multiplied by a vector Q1, Q2. That should give us these values. So what is this? P11, that is here. We know the probability of transmitting the data at point number one at the input and collecting the output at the point number one. You transmit here and collect the data here, then what's the probability? Log of the same parameter P11 plus P12 log P12. That means this row, if you see, it will talk about transmission of data from one of the inputs and collecting the data at different output points. And if you see the second row here, that talks about transmitting the data at the second input point and collecting the data at different or all the output points. So P21 log P21 plus P22 log P22. So just by knowing this, 
channel matrix, we can find out some parameters Q1 and Q2, right? Because we know P11, P12, 21, 22. And with that, we can also find these values, right? This is basically P11 log of P11 plus P12 log of P12. Similarly, for 21 and 22. So with these values, we can find out Q1 and Q2. So this is just a simple matrix operation. And these Q1 and Q2 will be contributing to the channel capacity. So that we will see in the next slide. So from the previous slide, we can write P11 multiply Q1 plus P12 multiply Q2. That is basically matrix multiplication is equal to P11 log P11 plus P12 log P12. If you want, I go back and show you what we did. So here, P11 multiply Q1 plus P12 multiply Q2. So that's basically matrix multiplication. You want to multiply this matrix and this matrix. So first row multiply first column, that's equal to this first row. And next, second row multiply by this column. This is basically matrix multiplication that will be equal to this, the second row here because we have a equal, equal sign here. So this side is equal to this side. So we just multiply these two matrices on the left hand side and then we equate to the right hand side. So that is what done here. In the first, uh, first relation here, P11 multiply Q1, P12 multiply Q2, that's equal to the first row on the right hand side. And then the sec talking about the second, second, uh, a line here p21 multiply q1 plus p22 multiply q2 that is from this p21 multiply q1 and p22 multiply q2 that will be equal to this second row in the right hand side of this matrix right this is basically from the matrix multiplication so now this if you want to find q1 and q2 how to solve this basically these are two simultaneous equations right so if we solve the above simultaneous equations we can get the value of q1 and q2 because only q1 and q2 are the unknowns here two unknowns and all other things we know p11 we know one two two one two two all these things we know so we can if we can substitute for those values we can easily find the values of q1 and q2 basically you need to solve this simultaneous equation when we have two unknowns it, it is very easy and then once we obtain q1 and q2 we can directly arrive at the channel capacity so this is the idea of murugos i mean this is the murugos method of finding the channel capacity so channel capacity is equal to log 2 power q1 Q1 is the value we have determined right now. And the two power Q2, Q2 is the value, the second value we have determined. So this is the final equation of Murugos method to find the channel capacity. And uh, if, if you want to know how to arrive, I mean, how to get these relationships, that's two power Q1 and two power Q2, of course, that is not the part of our syllabus, but uh, there is a special paper uh, by Murgos that uh, gives the detailed study of arriving at this particular relation. Why this should be two power Q or two power Q two and so on. So, but uh, our syllabus, uh, we have only to determine the channel capacity, assuming that we know the equation to find the channel capacity. So we directly use the equation to find the channel capacity. Okay, so in the Murugos method, the idea is we know the channel matrix. So with the help of channel matrix, we will find out some parameters. The parameters are named as Q parameters, maybe Q1, Q2, Q3, and so on, based on the size of the input and output. And once we find those Q parameters, 
we can directly arrive at the channel capacity equation. So to arrive at the, I mean, to find out the channel, these Q parameters, we need to have this relationship. Channel matrix multiplied by these Q vector, that multiplication is equal to P11, I mean, this entropy kind of relationship, P11 log P11, P1 to log P1 to and so on. So this is how we find out the channel capacity by Murugos method. So 2 power Q11, Q1 plus 2 power Q2. Why we have Q1 and Q2 here? Because our channel size is so much. We have two input, two outputs. If we have three input, three output, of course, we can extend the same relation further. So this is the case for a two cross two channel. That is a channel having two inputs and two outputs. Now we will see, if you have three inputs and a three output channel, then how to find the channel capacity? So the generalized idea is we can extend the same relation there. I mean, what we have seen for a two cross two setting, that, that applies to three cross three setting also. But we may have some, uh, we may have to use some wise method to find out the Q values. I will tell you why. Okay, so when you have a three cross three channel, that is a channel having the three inputs and uh, three outputs, something like this, you have a channel here, that this be a channel, and the channel has three inputs, one, two, and three, maybe x1, x2, and x3, and outputs y1, y2, and y3, okay? These are the y, these are random variable y, that represents different output points y1, y2, and y3. And we have the random variable x that represents different input points x1, x2, and x3. So this is basically the channel. Channel. Okay. Okay. So in this setting, how to determine the channel equation? So that is P y x that is p11 p12 p13 right so this is the input point number one and these are the output points number one two and three so probability from one to one one to two one to three that is you send some data at this point and what's the probability of receiving that data at this point or this point or the third output point here Okay, similarly for the second input, we determine what's the probability of data arriving as it is at the out three different output points, P21, P22, and P23. Similarly for the third input here, what's the probability of getting the same data here, here as well as the third output point here, that is P31, 32, and 33. Okay, now to find the channel capacity, we need to know the Q parameters. So to determine the Q parameters, we use the channel matrix PYX as shown here, and we multiply that with the Q vector. Since there are three output points as well as three input points, we write Q1, Q2, and Q3. The number three represents the order of the channel here. It's a three cross three, right? Three input, three out. Okay. That's equal to P11 log P11 from the first row. P12 log P12. P13 log P13. Here, the first row is represented this way. That's the information basically. This is the information what we get from the first row. I mean, when you send the data here and you collect the output at three output points, what's the total information you get here? That's the idea here, what's represented in the first row. In the second row here, P21 log P21, P22 log P2, P23 log 23. Similarly for the third row. Okay, so now we need to find out Q values. So how to find Q values? Again, it's a simple matrix uh, formulation. So how to find Q1, Q2, and Q3? 
So instead of going for uh, having an equation, simultaneous equation and solve it, right? Basically, you can do something like you multiply this and this, and that will be equal to this row, right? That is P11 multiply Q1 plus P12 multiply Q2, P13 multiply Q3. Then you add all these. That will be equal to this row here, right? This is what we have done in the previous uh, case of 2 cross 2. We can do the same thing here. But is it wise? Because we have three unknowns, Q1, Q2, Q3. And solving that simultaneous equation becomes uh, much challenging, right? So instead of that, we just go for an easy method. That is matrix division. So basically, we don't have division. So we find the matrix inverse, inverse of the matrix. So if you want to see here, so what? You want to find Q1, Q2, Q3, because this is the only vector that is unknown. We know all these elements here, as well as all the elements here. Then how to find out Q1, Q2, Q3? Q1, Q2, Q3 is equal to this matrix is inverse multiplied by this matrix, right? We will be taking this one, this matrix, P, Y, X, to this side, to the right hand side. So it becomes inverse. Inverse of this matrix multiplied by this matrix gives us the values for Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay. So that's what is done here. Q1, Q2, Q3 is equal to inverse of the left hand side matrix multiplied by the right hand side matrix. So I hope you know how to find out the inverse of a matrix, right? So maybe you need to go back to your uh, basics of uh, finding the matrix inverse. So we need to find out the determinant, right? And then we find the matrix inverse. Okay. So in case of finding the determinant, it's uh, very simple. You multiply the uh, diagonal matrix, diagonal elements, and uh, when you want to find the inverse, you exchange the diagonal elements, right? And then uh, that's for a two cross two setting. For a three cross three setting, the idea is a little different. I mean, it is same what we have uh, studied in matrix, uh, finding the matrix inverse. So then we find the channel capacity that's equal to log of. 2 power q1 plus 2 power q2 plus 2 power q3. So many bits per symbol. So as I mentioned before, even for a 3 cross 3 setting, the general equation remains the same. That is log of 2 power q1 plus 2 power q2 plus so on up to 2 power qn, where n indicates the number of or the order of the channel. If it's a three cross three, we have up to Q3. If it is four cross four, we have one more term that is two power Q4 and so on. Okay, so this is how we find out the channel capacity. So here again, I mean, everything is very simple. You just need to find out one unknown parameter that is vector Q, Q1, Q2 and so on. So you need to know how to find out the inverse of the matrix. So that is a basic matrix operation. And then another operation is multiplying the matrices. That's also a fundamental matrix operation. OK, so with this knowledge, we will move on to solve some examples initially. Maybe one or two examples we will consider. And then we will move on to solving the questions from the previous exams, especially the last three years I'm targeting. So I have about six question papers from that I have picked some questions and similar questions I don't go to solve again okay so we will move on to the first first question here first example so a channel is given please if you have the paper and pen you try to solve it with me so you'll get a better idea how to solve this so first find the channel capacity a channel is given it's a two cross two channel so here we have two inputs, x1 and x2, and two outputs, y1 and y2. And the transition probabilities are given. P11 is 0.75. P12 is 0.25. P21 is 
and P22 is 0 0.9. Then find the channel capacity. How can you find the channel capacity? So in order to find the channel capacity, we know everything. First, we need to find out the channel matrix. Yes, the channel matrix is given here. That's what I mentioned right now. P12, I mean P11 is 0.75. P12 is 0.25, P12 is 0.25, P21 is 0.1, P21 is 0.21, and P22 is 0 0.9. That's what given here. With this, we can find out the Q values because we will be multiplying this with the Q vector and equating that to the total information generated by every source that is p11 log p11 p12 log p12 and so on okay that's what we do here right now so we have two parameters here q1 and q2 because the size of the matrix or the size of this setting is 2 cross 2 so we have q1 and q2 so with this how to find out q1 and q2 so this is the channel matrix pyx multiplied by q1 q2 that should be equal to p11 log p11 that is here p11 log p11 plus p12 log p12 is given here similarly 0.1 log 0.1 and 0.9 log 0.9 that is here that is p22 okay so this row gives us the total information generated by the first input source and this gives us the total information generated by the second input point or second source x2 okay now we need to find out q1 and q2 how to solve q1 and q2 just uh, q1 and q2 is equal to this inverse of this matrix multiplied by this entire matrix. So now Q1, Q2 is equal to inverse of this matrix multiplied by the second matrix. This is the second matrix here. So when you calculate 0.75 log 0.75, you get a value. Add it with the 0.25 log 0.25. You should be getting somewhere around point, point minus 0.812. And similarly, the second term, 0.1 log 0.1 plus 0.9 log 0.9, when you find out the value here, you should be getting somewhere here. Okay. Then you first uh, find out the inverse of this matrix and then multiply by this matrix. Then you get two values, that is Q1 and Q2. The resultant matrix will be Q1 and Q2. So if you are working out this problem along with me, then you should be able to give me the answer. Okay. So you should be getting the Q1 value around minus 0 0.94. Similarly, the Q2 value will be somewhere around minus 0 0.4162. You please verify these values later. Okay, so since we know the values of Q1 and Q2, to find the channel capacity, we just need to substitute these values into the channel capacity equation given by Mulbaum. So channel capacity is nothing but log of 2 power Q1 plus 2 power Q2 because it's a 2 cross 2 channel or matrix. So we know the values of Q1 and Q2. We just plug in those values here in this equation and find out the channel capacity. So channel capacity is represented as uh, 0.344 bits per symbol. Okay, this is the method of finding the channel capacity for a two cross two uh, channel. So this is a specific example. Okay, now I move on to the next example here. It's a little more complicated. 
but the idea is almost similar. So in this case, we consider a three cross three setting. We have three sources or three input points that generates different symbols. And we collect the out, those symbols propagate through the channel and we collect the output at a different points. They are Y1, Y2, and Y3. And the probability of the symbol that was transmitted at X1 reaching the receiver Y1 as it is, is 0.8. 80% of the times, if you transmit a one here, you will receive a one here. Or 20% of the time, you will receive that here. This is the idea. Similarly, if you consider X2, its transition probability to different output points are 0 0.1. From X2 to Y2, the chance is 0 0.8. From X2 to Y3, the probability is 0 0.1. You transmit a 1 here or a 0 here that is received at the output point as it is with the probability of 0.1 or 10% chance that what you transmit at X2, you receive same at Y3. Similarly, for X3, we have different transition probabilities here. Okay, so if you see from any source when the data is transmitted, the total transition probability to all the output points, if you sum it up, it should be equal to 1. Right. For example, from X1, if you see this is 0.8, this is 0.2, only two transitions. Their sum is 1. From X2, if you see, we have one point that is 0 0.1. The second transition at a probability 0 0.8. The third transition with a probability of 0 0.1. So if you sum it up, here that also becomes one similar to the case for x3 okay so this is the channel setting and different inputs and their transition probabilities now what do you need to do you need to find out the channel capacity and also the average information capacity here for that some more information or some more input is given that is the rate of trans data transmission is 100 uh, 100 bits per second or 100 symbols per second. We use the same same parameter, maybe bits or symbols in this example. OK, so first a task is to find out the channel capacity by Murgos method. How, how can you find out? So first, since we know the channel probabilities, we can find out the channel matrix P, Y, X. So that will be a 3 cross 3 matrix. And then we multiply that with the vector Q1, Q2, Q3. That should be equal to P11 log P11 plus P12 log P12, P13 log P13, and so on. We just find out the inverse, and that gives us the values of Q1, Q2, and Q3. And then substitute those values of Q1, Q2, Q3 in the channel equation. C is equal to log of 2 power Q1 plus 2 power Q2 and 2 power Q3, and so on. That is how we find the channel capacity. So once we know the channel capacity, the total or average channel capacity is uh, found by multiplying this CS and uh, the data rate. CS multiplied by R should give us C, the total uh, capacity. OK, now we will do, do those things here. First, we need to find out the channel capacity. So for that, the very first step is to find out the channel matrix P, Y, X. So we know from the figure how to write P, Y, X, right? So that will be something like this. The first row will have 0 0.8, 0 0.2, and 0, because there is no transition from X1 to Y3. So first row will be 0 0.8, 0 0.2, and 0. The second row will have 0.1, 0.8 and 0.1. The third row will have 0, 0.2, and 0.8. We will witness that here. The third row will have 0, 
0.2 and 0.8. Similarly, the first row and second row I already mentioned. So this is how we write the channel uh, matrix or condition probability of the output when we know the transition probabilities. Okay, with that, we will move on to the next step. That is, since we know PYX, which is written here, we multiply this with, the, with some unknown vectors, Q1, Q2, Q3, they are nothing but the channel parameters, which assist in finding the channel capacity. That's equal to 0.8 log 0.8 plus 0.2, you have a plus sign here that is missing. So this should be a plus, right? This. And the second row is 0.1 log 0 0.1, 0.8 log 0.8. And the third row, 0, 0, 0.2 log 0, 0.2 and 0, 0.8 log 0, 0.8. Okay, so here, here, basically I'm writing this here 0, 0.8 log 0, 0.8, 0, 0.2 log 0, 0.2 and 0. The second row is represented here 0, 0.1 log 0, 0.1, 0, 0, 0, 0.1 log 0, 0.1. The third row, 0. 0 0.2 log 0 0.2 and uh, 0 0.8 log 0 0.8 that is um, right written here. So if we can find out the sum of this for the first row, sum of this for the second row and sum of this for the third row, we get a simple matrix here. One, uh, I mean three rows and one column matrix here. And then we need to find out Q1, Q2, Q3. That is nothing but inverse of this matrix multiplied by the resultant matrix here. So as mentioned, Q1, Q2, Q3 is nothing but the inverse of the matrix that was in the left-hand side multiplied by the resultant matrix by the addition of these different terms what we get that is here. Okay, now we need to find out the inverse of this matrix. It may take some time for you if you are calculating along with me there, but uh, you can verify those values later on. I will move on to give those values here. So when you find out the inverse and multiply with these values, you should be getting Q1 is equal to minus 0 0.65 pi 2. Q2 is equal to minus 0 0.989 and Q3 is equal to minus 0 0.65. Okay, so with these values, we can directly substitute in the equation of channel capacity. For channel capacity, it's nothing but log of 2 for Q1 plus 2 for Q2 and 2 for Q3. Since we know these values of Q1, Q2 and Q3, it becomes easy for us to find out this value is 0.828 bits per symbol. Okay, so after finding the channel capacity, we move on to find the total, I mean, average channel capacity, that is the channel capacity multiplied by the rate of information. So we know that it is 100. The value of R is given in the input as 1000. So we multiply that 1000 with the CS value, channel capacity here. And we should be getting as a simple multiplication. So it's 828 bits per symbol. So you please verify these values uh, when, when you try to solve this problem later on. OK. Now I move on to another question here. So this is a little uh, different type of question. And also, this is from the previous examination. So here, of course, in the previous examinations, we had uh, the questions that we have already discussed. The, for example, the very previous example, that is example number two, similar question was asked in the previous examinations. Uh, maybe the values are slightly different, but the method remains almost the same. 
I mean, exactly the same. So I'm not going to solve those questions again, where the values are only the difference. Now, but I'm going to another question here. So this is a little different type of question. And we can do some trick here when the scenario of the channel is something like this. And again, the question here, a channel is given and the transition probabilities are also given, then you need to find out what? You need to find out the channel capacity. So of course, you can use uh, the same method what we did for two cross two or three cross three. This is a four cross four setting, right? But here, there is one more possibility. So if you see here, the transition probabilities from this x1 to y1, what is this? Half. So remaining will be, anyway, it is not given, but it is half, it is understood. Because total, uh, some of the probability should be equal to one. Again, if you see the second source, even if you use the second source to send the data, its probability is half. If you consider the third source, it's a transition probability is half. You consider the fourth source, its transition probability is again half. So you consider any of these sources, the transition probabilities are the same. So this is a special case of the previous cases we discussed. So here we can do certain things in a better way or maybe a more easier way. So that's why I'm discussing this particular example here. Okay, so given channel is a symmetric channel. Okay, I will tell you what I have underlined here, symmetric channel, I will tell you what is symmetric channel. Okay, so since we know the channel setting, we can write its uh, channel matrix. So it's four cross four, X1, X2, X3, and X4. You have Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. So you notice here, these values are all half, right? From the This is from the transition probabilities, okay? So now I'm telling you, what's the symmetric channel? By seeing this, you can say, or you can define what's the symmetric channel. But I have given here some theoretical definition of a symmetric channel. A symmetric channel is one in which the transition probabilities from any of the inputs is the same. This is what we have witnessed in the previous slide. The transition probability from, for example, X1 to Y1 or Y2, transition probability from X2 to Y2 or Y3, transition probability from the third input, X3, to any of those outputs, transition probability from X4 to any of those outputs, they all are same, it's half in this case. In other words, the element set in all the rows, you see all the rows here of a channel matrix is the same. Second row is the same, third row is the same, and fourth row is same as the first, second or third row. The values here, what you have is half. Right, the transition probability is half or zero in some cases. Of course, they may be at different positions. The half is here, the half is here. Of course, that's okay, but altogether, you have the number half, half everywhere, every row. Right, so this is called as a symmetric channel. So, if the it's a symmetric channel, it's a special case of the general channel what we have seen in the first example, second example, or when we discussed the channel capacity, the theory of the channel capacity. So in this case, we, can, we may use the same method of following the Q1, Q2 parameters and finding the channel capacity. That's okay. However, we also have a new tweaked equation here. That is C is equal to log M minus p i i okay so if the channel is a symmetric channel then we can easily find the channel capacity using this equation of course we can use the previous equations but since it's a special case 
we have a special equation here. So a special case is a subset of the general case. Okay. Okay. Now we will try to use this equation to find the channel capacity. Using this equation, how to find the channel capacity, we will see that here. And I will also define what is M. M is nothing but the number of output points. What is PII? PII is represented here with respect to any row. Okay, so PII is equal to minus for all the columns probability of YJ log of probability of YJ that's equal to the probabilities here are half log half plus log so if you see any column here j represents a column all the values along a column are what half right so when you compute that half log half half log half should be getting one okay because the sum of all columns of any row you consider any particular row then the sum of all columns will be equal to one this is nothing but sum of probabilities from a source is always equal to one okay so that gives us the value of p11 this is always the same case right when you consider any row for example x1 is the row and you see different columns there those probabilities if you sum up it should be equal to one yes yes so we can write the channel capacity c is equal to from this equation log m m is the number of output points right now we have four output points y one two three four that's why four minus one one comes from this or from here one bit because always it is the same when you add up any of the columns you should be with respect to a specific row you should be getting the value one so the value becomes uh, one bit per second because this is a log base two so two minus one is one bit per second so this is the channel capacity for a symmetric channel or in general when a, when we have a symmetric channel the channel capacity can be found using this equation so this is much easier equation or simpler equation than using uh, finding the inverse and doing all those uh, all those uh, calculations okay so m is the number of output symbols okay so that is how we find out the channel capacity for a symmetric channel Okay, now I move on to the next example. Probably this is the last example of today's lecture. In this case, you find out the channel capacity. So here we have three inputs and three outputs. And the transition probabilities are given. Is it a symmetric channel? no right because if you consider this source and the transition probabilities they are 0 0.8 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 you consider this source and their transition probabilities they are totally different the numbers here are 0 0.2 0 0.6 0 0.2 these numbers and these numbers they don't match so this is not a symmetric source so in this case of course you need to find the channel capacity by the traditional or general method so this is not a special case this is a general case so you need to consider q1 q2 q3 and then you need to find the channel capacity so you, of course you need to find out the inverse of the matrix and all those calculations you need to do okay so this is similar to the second example what we discussed so i will quickly go through this example since we have discussed uh, these steps in the first example as well as in the second example and also this belongs to the general category first we need to find out the channel matrix channel matrix that is for x1 it's x1 to y1 0 0.8 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 
And once we know the channel matrix, we'll solve it using the Murugos general method. That is, this y x multiplied by the q vector. That's equal to the information of every source. That is 0 0.8 log 0 0.8. Second term here, 0 0.1 log 0 0.1, because the value here is 0 0.1, or the probability is 0 0.1. The third probability is again 0 0.1. So we have the third term here, 0 0.1 log 0 0.1. And similarly, the second row comes from the second row here. And the third row here, that comes from the third row here. OK, so when we want to find out Q1, Q2, Q3, you know the method. You just need to find out the inverse of this matrix and multiply with this matrix. So this matrix, I mean, when you add up these values as well as these values and these values here, those three rows should be somewhere here. The right hand side values will be point, minus 0 0.92 and uh, minus 1.372. Okay, then we have the following equation, I mean, 0 0.8 Q1 plus 0 0.1 Q2, and of course, okay. So this is the another method of solving that I had mentioned in the very first uh, discussions. That is using simultaneous equations. Of course, you can solve it by simultaneous equations or finding the inverse of the matrix. So the simultaneous equation, that method is shown here. So that is, if you want to do that again, what I did here is this multiplied by this 0.8 multiply q1 0.1 multiply q2 0.1 multiply q3 that's equal to the value here second so these three elements multiplied by these three that will be equal to this value here similarly the third one second equation 0.2 multiplied by q1, 0.6 multiplied by q2, 0.2 multiplied by q3, that's equal to the second value, that is here, second value. Similarly, the third value is uh, that you are multiplying the third row with the q1, q2, q3, and you get the third value. I mean, equate that to the third value here. So again, you need to solve these equations. Uh, you'll get q1, q2, and q3. In this case, if, since the values are simple, we could easily calculate Q1, Q2, Q3. Otherwise, we use the inverse matrix inverse uh, that method. Of course, any of the methods, uh, if you use, you should be landing at the same values. There is no issue. OK, when we know the Q1, Q2, Q3 values, you know how to find the channel capacity. That's equal to 0.359 bits per second. So that is the end of today's discussion.